In this video we're going to apply via CPR theory to six electron clouds. So if our goal is to find the shape of the sulfur hexafluoride molecule, once again we start with our dot structure. So sulfur is in group six on the periodic table, so six valence electrons. Fluorine is in group seven, so seven valence electrons, but I have six of them. So seven times six gives me 42, and 42 plus six gives me 48 valence electrons that we need to show in our dot structure. Sulfur goes in the center, so we we go ahead and put sulfur there and we surround sulfur with six fluorines. So let me go ahead and put in those six fluorines surrounding our sulfur. Our next step is to see how many valence electrons that we've shown so far. All right, so I go ahead and highlight those. Two, four, six, eight, 10 and 12. So 48 minus 12 gives me 36 valence electrons left over, which we put on our terminal atoms, which are our fluorines. So fluorine is going to follow the octet rule, and since each fluorine is already surrounded by two electrons, we're going to give each fluorine six more. So by giving each fluorine six more, now each fluorine has an octet of electrons around it. So if I'm adding six electrons to six atoms, six times six is 30. And so therefore, I have now represented all of my valence electrons, and we're done with our dot structure. We can move on to step two and count the number of electron clouds surrounding our central atom. So regions of electron density, right? So these bonding electrons here, that's a region of electron density, and I can just keep on going all the way around, right? So all of these bonding electrons surrounding our sulfur are regions of electron density. Therefore, we consider them to be electron clouds. Via CPR theory says that these valence electrons are all negatively charged, and therefore they're all going to repel each other and try to get as far away from each other in space as they possibly can. And so when you have six electron clouds, they're going to point towards the corners of a regular octahedron to try to get as far away from each other as they can. So an octahedron with eight faces on it. So let me see if I can sketch in an octahedron here. So let's see if we can do it. It's a little bit tricky to draw, but Let's see if we can do it right there. So if we consider our sulfur to be at the center right here, all right, let's go ahead and put a point up here and then start connecting some lines. All right, so this is uh, sort of what it looks like. All right, so let's do that and then a point down here as well. And so we connect those lines. And once again, this is a, a, just a rough sketch of an octahedron, right? Something like that. So if you think about where your fluorines are, right? There, here's a fluorine right here. There's a fluorine right here. So at these corners, right? You can think about a fluorine being there like that. So that's our octahedron. All right, so that's step three. The geometry of the electron clouds around the central atom, they occupy an octahedral geometry. Step four, ignore any lone pairs in your central atom and predict the geometry of the molecule. Well, since we have no lone pairs on our central sulfur, the, ge the geometry of the molecule is the same as the geometry of the electron clouds. And so therefore, we can say that sulfur hexafluoride right, is an octahedral molecule. So let's go ahead and write octahedral here. In terms of bond angles, let's analyze our drawing a little bit more here. So if I look at this, this top fluorine, right, and I go straight down like an axis to that other fluorine, we would expect one of the ideal bond angles to be 180 degrees for this octahedron here. And the other ideal bond angles would be 90 degrees, right? So if I think about the angle that the axis I just drew makes with this one right here, right? So that's 90 degrees as well. and Again, any, anywhere you look, you're also going to get 90 degrees. So let me go ahead and change colors here, and we can look at another bond angle in here. So this bond angle, right, that would also be 90 degrees. All right, so for an octahedral, all six positions, right, we have six fluorines occupying the six positions, are equivalent. They are identical, which means no axial or equatorial groups in an octahedral arrangement. And that makes, makes our life much easier because in the videos on five electron clouds, we had to think about the axial and equatorial groups. All right, let's do uh, let's do one for bromine pentafluoride here. So BrF5. So valence electrons, bromine has seven. It's in group seven. Fluorine is also in group seven, and I have five fluorines. So seven times five gives me 35. 35 plus 7 gives me 42 valence electrons. 
bromine goes in the center and bromine is bonded to five fluorines so I can go ahead and put those five fluorines around our central atom All right we have represented let's see two four six eight and ten valence electrons so far so far 42 minus 10 is of course 32 valence electrons and we're going to put start putting those leftover electrons on our terminal atoms which are our fluorines so once again, we're going to give each fluorine an octet. All right, so we're going to put six more valence electrons around each of our fluorine atoms. And so we're putting six more electrons around five atoms. So six times five is 30. So 30, so 32 minus 30 gives me two valence electrons left over. And whenever you have valence electrons left over after assigning them to your terminal atoms, you put them on your central atom. And so there's going to be a lone pair of electrons on our central bromine like that. All right, so we've drawn our dot structure. Let's go back up here and look at our steps again. So after drawing our dot structure, we next count the number of electron clouds that surround our central atom, and then predict the geometry of those electron clouds. And so if we look at our central bromine here, all right, let's see how many electron clouds. Well, we would have, we would have these bonding electrons, right, in a region of electron density these bonding electrons, these bonding electrons, and we keep on going around here. So those are all electron clouds. So that's five. And then remember these non-bonding electrons, this lone pair of electrons is also a region of electron density. And so we have six electron clouds. And so we just saw in the previous example, when you have six electron clouds, the electron clouds are going to want to point towards the corners of a regular octahedron. So you're gonna get an octahedral geometry for your electron clouds. All right, so let's think about let's think about this one though. Where would we put those lone that lone pair of electrons um, in an octahedron? Well, sit, since all six positions are identical, it doesn't really matter which one you put that lone pair of electrons in. And so let me see if I can just go ahead and sketch out this shape really fast. So if I if I were to draw bromine right here, I'm going to put a fluorine going in this direction, another fluorine going back, this one coming out a little bit, and this one going away. And then I'm gonna put a fluorine going this way. And then I'm gonna put the lone pair of electrons right down here. And it, again, it didn't really matter which one I chose since they're all identical. I just chose it this way because it's a little bit easier to see the geometry, right? Because when you're looking at the geometry of the molecule, you ignore any lone pairs of electrons on your central atom. And so if we ignore that lone pair of electrons now, and we look at the shape, right? So let's see if we can connect these dots here. So we're just gonna connect this to look at a shape. So we have, we have a square base here, and and if we connect up here to this top fluorine, right, well that's kind of a pyramid. So we have a pyramid with a square base, and so we call this square pyramidal. So let's go ahead and write that. This shape is referred to as a square pyramidal shape. And in terms of bond angles, right, we know we know our ideal bond angles are going to be 90 degrees, right? So if we look at that, let's use, let's use this green here. So it's just like we talked about before, right? So that bond angle is 90 degrees, right? This bond angle in here is 90 degrees. So our ideal bond angles are all 90 degrees for our square pyramidal geometry. All right, let's do one more example of six electron clouds, and this is uh, xenon tetrafluoride. So we need to find our valence electrons, right? So xenon ha is in group eight, eight valence electrons. Fluorine is in group seven, so seven valence electrons times four gives me 28. 28 plus eight gives me 36 valence electrons. Xenon goes in the center, so we go ahead and put xenon in the center here. And xenon is bonded to four fluorines, right? So we go ahead and put in our four fluorines surrounding our xenon. And let's see, we have represented two, four, six, and eight valence electrons. So 36 minus eight, right, that would give me 28 valence electrons left over, which we will put on our terminal fluorines here. So each fluorine is going to get an octet, and so we need to put six valence electrons on each one of our fluorine atoms. So we are representing six more electrons on 
four atoms, so six times four is 24. So 28 minus 24, right, gives us four valence electrons left over, and we're going to put those on our central atom here. So we're going to put those on the xenon. So we go ahead and add in those four electrons in the form of two lone pairs to our central atom. All right, let's go back up and refresh our memory about what we do after we draw our dot structure. All right, so after you draw your dot structure, you count the number of electron clouds, right? And then you predict the geometry of those electron clouds. And so let's count our electron clouds for this one. All right, so our regions of electron density. So we can say that these bonding electrons are electron cloud, right? Same with these bonding electrons and these over here as well. And in this example, we have we have two lone pairs of electrons, and each one of those is a region of electron density, and so we have a total of six electron clouds for this example. So once again, six electron clouds, they are going to want to get as far away from each other as they can, so they are going to be in an octahedral arrangement. And so let's see if we can uh, sketch out this molecule again. All right, so if the lone pairs of electrons want to get as far away from each other as they possibly can, all right, we're gonna put those lone pairs 180 degrees from each other. So here's one lone pair, and then here's our other lone pair. All right, it's as far away from each other as they can get. And then we're going to put our fluorines in here. So here's one fluorine, right? Here would be another fluorine, and then we would have two more back here. So when we look at the shape of xenon tetrafluoride, all right, let's see if we can sketch in what the shape would look like here. So remember you, when you're predicting the geometry of the molecule, you ignore the lone pairs of electrons. And so that makes it much easier to see that we have a square that is planar. All right, so we call this square planar. So the geometry is square planar. And in terms of um, ideal bond angles, right, that would be 90 degrees. And so let me go ahead and show that real fast. So in terms of bond angles, right, everything here would be 90 degrees for our square planar. And so that's, um, that's how to approach six electron clouds, right? And our first example had zero lone pairs of electrons around the central atom. Our second example had one lone pair. And our third example had two lone pairs. And so even though the, the um, electron clouds have the same geometry, the actual molecule is said to have a different shape because you ignore the lone pairs of electrons on your central atom.